Reality returns. What's wrong with that? What's wrong, as I said in that 1999 speech to financial analysts mentioned earlier, is that when we take for granted that fluctuating earnings are steady and ever-growing, somewhere down the road there lies a day of reckoning that will not be pleasant. Well, measured by the level of stock prices, the day of reckoning was indeed close at hand. On March 24, 2000, only a few short months after my talk, the stock market made its high and then began to descend. When it reached its low on October 9, 2002, the Nasdaq index largely reflecting the new economy had plummeted by 78%, with the New York Stock Exchange index that largely reflected the old economy off 33%. While both have since recovered some of the lost ground, the aggregate market capitalization of U.S. stocks remains some $4 trillion below its $17 trillion high. As we have seen, when we repeatedly fool ourselves and others, and when the gap between perception and reality grows beyond reason, it is only a matter of time until reality returns, usually with a vengeance. Speculators and day traders experience financial duress, often severe. Overly opportunistic investors realize the error of their ways and pull in their horns. Slowly, the idea of value returns to the stock market. The eternal truth reemerges. The value of a corporation's stock is the discounted value of its future cash flow. All over again, we learn that the purpose of the stock market is simply to provide liquidity for stocks in return for the promise of future cash flows, enabling sellers of stocks to realize the present value of a future stream of income at any time, and buyers of stocks to acquire the right to that future income stream. Corporations, we again come to realize, must earn real money. It almost goes without saying that bubbles are inflated by unrealistic expectations, and our financial system seems to thrive on building expectations that are optimistic beyond the pale. Wall Street analysts are unremittingly bullish. Of 1,028 stock recommendations made by the typical brokerage firm during the first quarter of 2001, only seven were sell recommendations. Even as late as October 2001, just before its collapse, 17 out of 18 analysts rated Enron a buy. Going back to 1981, consensus estimates for future five-year corporate earnings growth have never been less than 10.2% and have averaged 11.5%, nearly twice the 6% actual annual growth for that two-decade-plus period.